Hey, and welcome to this beginner guide to speedrunning Ocarina of Time with glitches at any percent. I'm planning on making uh, roughly six parts with one optional part that you can choose to do if you want, but it won't be necessary. It's just extra. And I'm going to be trying to make each video about 15 minutes long, so there will be skimming. And anyway, so the first thing we're going to do, which I'm already currently doing, is we're going to go uh, get the Kukiri Sword. Kukiri Sword is a necessary item for this particular run. Uh, other people have done runs where they're just swordless runs, and those are kind of fun, but this is not it. This is a beginner's guide. So all of these glitches, with the exception of two, are very, very easy in comparison to others. They're not... Some might be harder than others, but for the majority... They're pretty easy, and most people will be able to do them. So the first thing we're going to do is set up what we call the Navi Dive. And that requires the Kokiri Sword. So now that we have the Kokiri Sword, we're just going to quickly go over to the... What's it called? Oh, jeez, I can't... I'm throwing a blank here, which is dumb. Anyway, the forest. Oh, Lost Woods. Right, right, right. Okay. It's stinking Lost Woods. Okay, so I'm just fast forward in here, but make your way to the Lost Woods. And then to set this up, you ha if you're planning on speedrunning this, you can know exactly when Navi is going to talk to you. And you have to get into the spot at the exact point of the song that's playing. So you listen till just before the end of this song. So you want to be able to set it up. So you want to go over to the place where you can dive down if you have the silver scale into... Uh, the Zora River, and you want to aim a certain way, so you want to aim about here, it doesn't really matter as long as you get towards the center, you're going to jump in and grab it, and then right when the song, it, when, na when you see that Navi thing pop up, you want to press B twice and mash C up, and that will always get you, so here, B twice, C up, and now, you're going to want to angle forward after you press A, and a little to the left, and that'll clip you right through and now we've made it to Zora's River. Um, it is possible to get into Zora's domain without even learning Zelda's Lullaby. Uh, all it requires is a chicken and you just jump to the side of it but we're not going to be doing that because we never actually are going to get the boomerang. Um, if you didn't want to get the slingshot which is what we're going to do you could get the bombs and then the boomerang and you wouldn't ever need to go in the Deku Tree, which is really cool. But we are going to go in the Deku Tree once. So anyway, we got... Uh, we have to buy 10... Oh, okay. It costs 10 rubies, and we need to buy one uh, Magic Bean. And this is very important, but you do not have to get this if you're going to do the optional part, which I think is going to be part 4. Um, if, you're, if you don't plan on ever going in the Water Temple, you do not need this. I mean, if you don't plan on going in the Water Temple, you do need this, and if you do plan on going in the Water Temple, you don't. Um, depends on how you want to do this playthrough. And I sucked and missed my opportunity to get into Kakariko before nightfall, but it's okay, because we can still go into the graveyard and plant the bean, and then we'll just skip to daytime. I guess. So this will just be me quickly running over here into the graveyard. So we'll just skim through this. Okay, now, the, we're going to get rid of the bean right off the bat. And where you want to put it is in the left side of the graveyard. Uh, it's usually where you would get a piece of a heart as an adult, but we're not going to use it for that. When we become an adult, we will use it for a certain glitch that will help us get into the Shadow Temple early. So, now that it's open, or like, planted, uh, we're pretty much all skipped to daytime. Okay, so now it's daytime, and we're back in Kakariko, and now what we need to do is collect all these Kukos to get the first bottle and I say first bottle, we're only actually ever going to get one, but we will get other ones through glitches. So anyway, we already got the first cuckoo. It was cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Anyway, 
go over here, you jump over. If you don't know how to do this, it's just you press B right as you get to that thing. You can pick him up over there and then throw him off. I was just pretty bad. And I missed it. So anyway, throw him over the fence. <laughs> okay. And I did something stupid here. Uh, you can do this and then you can angle it and jump, but I just did a side hop accidentally and totally put your bad. So there's no point in that. That was a mess up. So this, if you time it exactly right and press B, you'll land on the fence and throw the cuckoo over, and it'll save you a little bit of time. Now what I'm trying to do here is you grab the cuckoo, and you, you aim it in the right direction, and you slash it with your sword, and it'll run that way. That way you just don't have to run back here twice, and it saves you a little bit of time. Well, a lot of time, really. So now we're just taking these cuckoos over. And after I grab this next one, there's only two more left. Three more, my bad. Three more. Um, normally, you're supposed to take a cuckoo and then jump from uh, the unfinished building over here, but it's just so simple to just come over here. You just press C up, angle. It doesn't even matter really on your angle. And you're going to press B, and then you're going to side hop and press B. Simple as that. The angle doesn't really matter as long as it's somewhat like mine. And so now there's two more cuckoos. One's in a box and one's up at the top by the gate. So we're going to quickly come and grab this. And I don't know if it's possible to grab the cuckoo before it starts running. I don't think I've ever been able to. I wouldn't doubt that it is possible. And I didn't mean to let go of him. Okay, okay, whatever. Well, we're back with this. And I don't know if it's possible... I've never done it, so we're just going to skim through this, hopefully, yeah, okay, skimming through this and grabbing the last cuckoo so we can get the bottle. The bottle is essential for this run because we're going to do a specific glitch which will let us skip every ocarina, so we'll never actually get the ocarina of time or the fairies ocarina, I think it's called. So anyway, I actually messed up. I wanted to get out of there. So what we want to do is we want to get a fish. We want a fish rather than a beetle or a bug. You can use a bug, and it, a bug is just under that rock towards the left over there. But I, the fish is better, and it's easier to use because this certain glitch that we're going to do next, we're going to clone a bottle because we've used the magic bean, and we don't need it anymore. So it's just a waste of space, and we're just going to keep a fish in there just in case we mess up a glitch later. Although, I don't really think it's necessary to even do this. But I'm just trying to show off how to do it. So what you would do is you would press... You would uh, release the bottle. And then you're going to want to use the bottle and immediately press start, like I did. And then you're going to switch the item and that's going to clone the bottle to that item. You won't be able to use the other item anymore. I mean, you, I think you can if you go and buy. It'll reset it. But now we have two bottles. And now we can catch... And they're both fully functional bottles, and we can go and catch the fish. Again, now we have two fishes. So now we need Zelda's Lullaby. So we're going to quickly skim over to Zelda. And he freaking has to talk to you every time you leave, unless you talk to Zelda, which is annoying. So to get to Zelda, we need to talk to, I think it's Malin. Um, yeah, so you got to talk to her here. It's a little faster if you talk to her here, and then... We're going to go in and then immediately back walk backwards out and then back in. If, yes, okay. So we're going to back walk and then we're going to go right back in. And now Malin should be standing out in front of the vines and now we just have them. So it's a little faster than getting caught by a guard the first time. Stupid owl. Anyway, so we talk to her and she's going to give us the pocket cuckoo. Or a cuckoo, I don't know. And it's really sensitive right there. You gotta get it exactly in the middle. Sometimes I'm better than others at getting it quickly. So we're gonna go over here, and I'm gonna try and show you a cool little glitch. It's really hard on this emulator because it doesn't really show the seam, and you have to see the seam to be able to walk up. But the cool thing about this corner right here is if you align it perfectly, you can actually walk up this seam and then just roll all the way over to Zelda's, I mean, to the castle. 
but I missed it there. Uh, let's see if I can aim it up again. It would be easier if I could use... Okay, so I'm going to try and look up now. Yeah, you can't even see the scene on this emulator, so I'm just kind of guessing. What you would do is you'd slowly walk up and you'd hop up, and you'd want to keep B aligned with Z on the left side of the B button. But it's not really worth it. If you don't make it in time, since we don't have the bombs or bomb shoes, there's really no point. We do have to talk to Talon. So as long as you can try that, and as long as you get all the boxes moved and you're standing right by Talon before the morning breaks, you will not waste any time. So it was fine that we tried that. It didn't waste any time. And we need, we're gonna need 55 rubies in the next part, I believe. Uh, Cause we're gonna buy the shield and we're gonna get uh, Dekuna. Because for some reason I cannot find Dekuna. So it's just worth it to get 55 rubies right off the bat. So you wanna move these boxes as far as you can. They'll save you a little bit of time since we're waiting right now. And we'll just push the other one towards him a little bit. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to stand by him. You're going to bring out the pocket cocoa and put it on C right. Or it doesn't really matter. I just always like C right. I don't like to put items on the other ones because I think it's cool. I will eventually. But now we're going to wait. And then the second you see the box, you can click it. And then he will. It'll activate the cutscene. It saves a little bit of time. So we're going to quickly skim through this and push these blocks over. And then we're going to go um, through the, what do you call it? We're going to sneak past the guards. And this can be more difficult sometimes rather than others. But this guy, usually, from what I've seen, he's always going to, you're always able to do that right at the beginning. These guys sometimes... You'll be able to just quickly get past them like I'm doing. Sometimes it's not. It really depends on where they are standing. Uh, wow, okay, cool. Usually I have to go up that, but that guy's actually in a good spot where I can just roll past him. So we'll just quickly do that instead of running on the top there. Yeah, okay, these guys suck. Usually or sometimes I should say, you can quickly side hop all the way across, but he was looking down, so that's a bummer. This is a pretty bad rotation on this one. Hopefully the next one's okay. So now we're gonna be able to follow this guard, which is cool. All right, so you don't wanna go in front of him, but you don't wanna be too far back, just in case the other guy comes and sees, but he won't. There's no time for him to do that. So he'll just clip the corner like that, and we will go through. Oh, sweet! They spawned right next to each other. This is like the best situation for uh, how they can spawn. Because they're actually going to go stand right by each other. It's like a waste of a guard. It's kind of funny. It does not always work like this. Sometimes they are perfectly separated, and it's like almost impossible to get past them, and it's freaking ridiculous. So anyway, now we've made it into Zelda's uh, courtyard, I guess. Castle courtyard. And we're just going to go to this. And this is one of the longest cutscenes in the game, so I'm going to really skim through this really fast. Because if you want to play the game for real, you can watch it. <laughs> but this is for speedrunning. So now that we've gotten the letter, now we can go over here. And this is actually a glitch from my emulator. I have no idea why it does it, but her body is on the left. It's kind of funny. There's going to be a couple instances in this game where it'll happen again. And it's just weird. I think it's my emulator. I don't think it has anything to do with the glitches I've been doing. So anyway, we got Zelda's Lullaby, and that is going to be the end of part one. Um, in the next part, we're going to go into... We're going to go into Desert Colossus as a child link. So that's going to be exciting. So I'll see you guys in part two.